Hello and welcome to our channel, RVTV. Rift Valley Tube is your YouTube source for all the history and happenings of East Africa. If you like our content and are interested in learning more about the wonders of East Africa, hit the subscribe button. TV tubers. If you've been here before, welcome back. If you are new, Rift Valley Tube is your YouTube source for the amazing stories, histories and cultures from East Africa. If you enjoy the content and want to know each time we bring you more stories, subscribe. In today's video, we will go deeper into one of the leaders of the Battle of Adwa that took place in Ethiopia in 1896. When going into battle to bring Ethiopia under Italian power, General Oreste Baratieri had the confidence of a conqueror. He was in the prime of life, having served under General Giuseppe Garibaldi, one of the greatest generals of the modern era. Baratieri saw battles far and wide and stepped into the position of general with experience and recognition. Little did he know that all his experience would be challenged by a seemingly weak African nation. Little did he know that a woman would lead to his downfall. Welcome to the Rift Valley Tube, your source for the histories, news, and narratives of the phenomena that is East Africa and its shifting lands. March 2nd, 2021 marks the 125th year since the Ethiopian people prevailed over a threatening foreign power intent on occupation and colonization. Napoleon of Africa. This article was written March 19, 1896 by Julian Ralph in the New York Journal. The sway and career of Emperor Menelik of Abyssinia. Something of Bertorotieri, the defeated Italian general, 
the trouble all on account of a treaty, Queen Taitu, the light of Ethiopia. General Bratieri, who fought a madman's battle in the hope of winning and convincing his countrymen of their mistake in superseding him, is a middle-aged man and the son of a Tyrolean magistrate, educated in a Franciscan monastery. He joined General Garibaldi when a boy, enlisting in the Marsala Thousand. He next became a captain in the Italian army and was wounded in the war with Austria. His next performance was to join an exploring party in the Sudan. And when he came home, he was made editor of the Revista Militare of Rome. Baratieri afterwards served as a military attaché to Berlin and Vienna. When General Garibaldi was sent to the Red Sea coast, he took Baratieri as he was one of the few Italians who knew Africa thoroughly. Under General Gandolfi, Baratieri distinguished himself in his operations against the Abyssinians, the Somalis, and the Dervish tribes. And on Gandolfi's retirement, he was made governor commander in chief of the Italian colony. His fall seems now complete, for the Italian papers are already suggesting that he ought to be shot. He cuts a wretched figure at present in the turn of the dice of fortune. But Menelak, who worsted him, is a figure fit to enarch through a splendid spectacle of the modern stage. It was no contemptible foe which defeated Baratieri. Menelak II claims to be descended in direct line from Menelak I, Emperor of Ethiopia, son of King Solomon by the Queen of Sheba. He succeeded to the throne in 1889 at the death of John II and concluded in that year a treaty with Italy which placed his kingdom under an Italian protectorate. He has quarreled again and again with the Italians over the text of that treaty. Menelik seems to be a statesman of great power of will, for he has consolidated the semi-independent viceroyalties into one homogeneous, powerful people and is in reality, therefore, emperor. So far from disdaining European ideas, he cultivated his relations with the foreign powers, notably with Russia, on the religious questions, and it is said there are one Russian officers serving in his army who will know how to make excellent use of the 60 guns captured from the Italians. The Negus, as Menelik is styled, married a beautiful, courageous lady, Queen Taitu, the light of Ethiopia. The Daily Graphic describes her as a very warlike lady who is said to have desired to lead her bodyguard in person to the assault of Michele the other day. Travelers who have seen her speak in favorable terms of her personal appearance and intelligence. She is a native of Simeon and a member of one of the noblest families of Ethiopia. Menelik fell in love with her and ever since her marriage has been her most devoted slave. Every state question is referred to her by the king and on more than one occasion she herself has written important state documents. She is enormously wealthy and has acquired large estates as a provision for a rainy day. Since Makonen has brought specimens of Europe's sparkling wines from Rome, she has developed a decided taste for champagne. The Empress dresses in Ethiopian costume, but with much elegance of taste. I read a very interesting letter dated Obak, February 18, and which has just been received from a French physician who is fresh from a visit to Menelik. He says that the camp is in excellent order, the troops well armed, and that there is any quantity of rifles and cannon. He had an interview with Menelik, whom he sourcely recognized, as both he and his troops appeared to have acquired a great dignity of character, in which previously they were found conspicuously lacking. Menelik professed to be greatly grieved on account of the war, in which so much Christian blood was being shed. I have a perfect horror of blood, he exclaimed. You are aware of this. I don't want bloodshed. Menelik would not to his interviewer confide the plan of his campaign. 
but he especially relied on the superior number of his troops, on the certainty of procuring provisions for them, and on the difficulty experienced by Europeans in getting over the ground, to starve out, and finally to capture the Italians, and when attacked, he would defend himself. That was all. Menelik seemed confident as to the issue of the war, but spoke all along in a very melancholy tone. Why is it that so much blood is shed? He asked. Why should war be waged at all? Julian Ralph in the New York Journal. Oh, God!